Hello everyone, we're back and it's good to see you. I'm watching you as you're logging in from Michigan, Colorado, Toronto, looks like Florida, Cincinnati, Spain, uh, and uh, perhaps New Mexico. Uh, keep coming and keep uh, identifying as you do. We're glad to have you. I wanna take you immediately to today's topic, which is the high performance landing page. We've heard all of that before, but we will not have heard much of what we're going to talk about today as we focus on the power of coherence. To do that, uh, I might uh, suggest that you send in some pages for review. We have some already prepared, but they'll be critical for me to explain why the live op you've seen us do in the past is insufficient. In the meantime, I wanna share a video with you. I don't know how well this is going to play depending on where you're at in the world, but you can always Google this uh, simple headline and find and watch the video yourself, uh, but let's try it. So on my right is Austin Spence, a Scotsman, and look at the video. If you haven't figured this out, that's cash blowing out of the back of an armored truck. And those are people trying to pick up the cash. It's a fairly long video, but I think you might get the point. Somebody had a red letter day. A lot of cash blew out of that truck. And as you can see, somebody got some of it. I'd like to emphasize that point. Uh, I would, uh, in, the, in the tradition of Oprah Winfrey, love to have each of you with a big surprise under your chair right now and you could reach down and there'd be a stack of cash. Not likely going to happen. However, I think I can help you find a stack of cash in your landing pages if you stay close with me. And I'd like to point out that there's something in the psychology of that approach and the psychology of those people that we can learn from today. Because they're reaching down, trying to get some of that cash. Nobody gets all of it. And that's a tragedy in its own right for the person who doesn't get it. And yet everybody is trying to get some of it. And this reminds me of the way uh, we conduct our meetings around the development of new websites and landing pages and optimization projects around our campaigns for paid search, for display ads, etc. And indeed, there is a sort of connection between our approach to optimization and the chasing of that money. In many cases, we chase random ideas that come up in our meetings. We, we somehow integrate them into our designs and we hope that we make money. We are looking for that found money already existing in our pages. If you just tuned in, it's very likely that your current funnel is leaking cash every day. And as it leaked out of the back of that armored truck, you are tasked as the marketer many times to go get that money. The problem is the best we can do is reach down and try to get a few pieces while the rest blows away and while other people and food, indeed our competitors are getting the rest. There is a systematic way for you to approach this process of optimization focused on the concept of coherence that can help you produce a whole different type of experience and in a sense, help you vacuum up all that leaking cash that's currently falling out, blowing out of your funnel. Now, as you think about that, I wanna to suggest to you that this happens for three very specific reasons, and those three reasons are going to power three principles that we'll talk about later. But the first reason is something I call pages before hypotheses. You may wanna take notes on this, but too often, we develop a page, and I'm going to abbreviate, and we do that before we develop a hypothesis. And if you develop your page before you develop a proper messaging hypothesis, you have cash blowing out of the back door of your process. Indeed, that's the first deadly mistake. Here's another one. Diagnosis without prescription. So I'm gonna, again, abbreviate, and I want you to think about what I'm trying to say, but how many of you would be satisfied if uh, you went 
to the doctor and you explained to him that you were having a serious pain and let's call it, uh, let's, let's raise the stakes, perhaps internal bleeding. And, uh, and then you go to the doctor and they carefully diagnose a whole number of problems going on with you. It might be that your right leg is shorter than your left leg. Is that causing the internal bleeding? No, but it's a problem. It might be that that affects your hip and uh, thus you have hip pain. And at the same time, they diagnose that there's something else going on over here with um, perhaps uh, your eyesight. And, uh, and then they look closer and they diagnose that you may have a very serious internal problem. I don't know what it is. I don't really want to go to those negative, uh, uh, make this illustration too negative. But ultimately you come away with a third diagnosis. You discover you have 21 problems and then they send you home. Would you be satisfied with that outcome? What's missing in that conversation? What's missing in that analysis. Indeed, what's missing is that the doctor failed to move from diagnosis to prescription. Now, you may say, yeah, and that's hard because my eyesight and internal bleeding are probably completely unrelated, yes. And it's the same thing when I look at your landing pages. Many of you who are, uh, you know, members of our community, who've been with me for years, who've listened to me do live op. In fact, if you go to marketingexperiments.com, uh, there are pages and pages and pages where I do uh, why, uh, you know, clinics and I'm t showing you where I see errors. The problem with that approach, it's my own approach, is it's not enough. It's necessary to use a piece of philosophy. In fact, you may study this, uh, look it up. It's a necessary condition, but it's not a sufficient condition. It is important. It needs to be done, but it is not enough. And that's... Uh, all I can do when I'm doing pure diagnosis. These are issues and I, I'm hoping that you'll be able to take some of that diagnosis and see problems and fix them. But in reality, until you know how to move from diagnosis to prescription, you can't achieve coherence and you're not going to see the major lifts that you could achieve. And even if you are watching these videos and being able to pick up some more cash coming out of that truck, good, but you're leaving still too much on the ground. So stay with me as I tell you the third problem I see over and over again. You know, a lot of my students are in agencies. I am not anti-agency, but it's particularly true in marketing departments, and I see it in agencies all the time. And here it is, the third problem. So one, two, three. The third problem is creativity, and I can't get down very low here, so I'm just going to go creativity without science. Creativity is not the enemy of science. Indeed, you need the creativity in order to generate great hypotheses, but then you need science in order to validate or at least analyze those hypotheses. Now, without science, creativity can actually get you in trouble. Creativity has nothing to discipline that wild reach, which is so essential, which is what powers it. The lateral thinking that allows you to see in a different way. It's vital, it's important, but you need the science. And once you know you have the comfort of science to discipline the creativity, you can release the full power of your mind. I have three problems. These are not the primary point we're going to teach today. We're going to talk about a way to think a new way to think, focused on coherence that addresses all of these problems. But beware of building a page before you develop a hypothesis. Beware, beware of doing a diagnosis without a prescription. And beware of creativity without science. Now having said that, Nathaniel, I hope that got you the first point and the answer to your question. If you're new to these YouTube Live uh, programs, I'm watching in a monitor right there all of your feedback. Over there, I see myself in the whiteboard. Behind that is a gigantic screen, and it has uh, the handful of slides that we'll touch. On my right is Austin Spence, who is running all of these monitors, and back in the control room is a team led by Cliff Rayner, our executive producer, 
who's helping us get this done today. I'm grateful for them, but now let's concentrate on the answer to an important question. And that question is this, how can I move from low probability performance that comes with just good ideas to the high probability performance that comes with strategic messaging? How do I get into that zone? I could simplify that problem by saying, how do I get all that cash that's falling out of the back of my truck? That's what we're going to talk about today. And to do so, I'm going to erase the board and begin with the first point. So we have three points. We're going to look at pages. And with those pages, we're going to start to see a problem. And as an example, let's pull up some pages. Shifting over, go full screen if you would, Cliff. Uh, so they're easier for me to see and our audience. And here's a page. Uh, it's forget everything you know about insurance. Uh, let's shift to that. That's a good page. Take a look at it. How would you fix this page? What's wrong with this page? In fact, somebody right now, give me two or three main ideas, two or three problems you see we're diagnosing now. What's something you would do to improve this page? You have 10 seconds, and I'm going to look to another page. 10, 9, I'm watching here on the chat. Eight. By the way, welcome uh, Slovakia. It looks like Hira. I, I can't pronounce your name. I don't think is it Hira Simbera. Let us know so we pronounce it properly. But we're glad to have you. Shane, no clear suggestion. Kyle or Chow says false bottom. Elad says no value prop. Okay, you keep them coming. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. I like it. Keep thinking. Let's go to another one. Take me another page quickly. I'm going to come back but I want, you to show, uh, I want you to look at another page. Here we go. Again, page submitted by people in our audience. You have 10 seconds. What is wrong with this page? Bring data-rich enterprise applications to your, I think, Kubernetes platform, if you pronounce it that way. All right, here it is. Keep them coming. Lots of big words. Vague headline, you're right. Boring, says Elad, right. I have no idea what you're selling. Shane says, What's Kubernetes? Generic headline, no clear prop, not specific, color of text, gobbledygook, it's ugly, uh, no CTA, no outcome. Uh, this is the audience speaking. I would be much more kind than these people. Um, I'm just teasing. These are good insights, but how do you go from those diagnoses to a high performance page? It's not enough to see the problems. It is certainly important to see them. In fact, if you can't see them, you'll never get the rest. But if you see them and you don't know what to do once you have seen them, you are still stuck. So I bring you to the deck again and show you one simple case study and tell you an example of how we saw an amazing impact. In fact, the impact was so high that uh, the company who finance this group, you'd know them. Uh, one of their senior leaders ran for president a few years back, and uh, they came to us and said, can you help us with our other investments? The results were so remarkable for them. This is a nationwide a roll up of, a, a, you know, it's a, it's a huge organization. Here's the problem. How can they generate more inquiries, more leads for a sort of a medical treatment? That being said, here we go. Control. Congratulations on finishing that course, Shane. Control. This is the original page. Now look at it. It's attractive. It's professional. It has a lot of good things going for it. But if you were to look closer, if you were to get beneath the page, remember it's not really a page. It's just a signal set, cueing thoughts and ideas in the mind. If you were to look beneath the page into the mental uh, absorption of what's happening, and then beneath that into the actual performance results, there's cash falling out of that truck. That armored truck, and it's an armored truck, it's, a, it's an organization with so many billions of dollars it would stagger you, but they're leaking. And with all the money they have, and with all the high paid people, and all the resources, they can't get the cash off the ground. So, there it is. I want to show you the new page. Before I do, you'll see coming up some of the problems with the page. Unnecessary nav, headline offers little value, multiple, sounds like what you were saying a while ago from learning and working together with us. 
And that's right. There are these problems and many more. Now look at the fix. It's counterintuitive. Number one, it's a much longer page. And in most marketing groups, we would, we would vote on the page to the left. If I had began the broadcast saying which page produces the highest performance, many of you would have chosen the page on the left. Certainly those of you not familiar with our methodology. Now, long copy is not the reason this page is performing. Long copy was necessary because of the reason expressed in the hypothesis as a, as a function of coherence. Now, there is something happening in this page beyond diagnosis. There is a prescription, and it's not a bunch of little fixes. Did everybody hear me? It's not reaching down and picking up this little piece of cash and that little piece and maybe a piece over here. It's a, it's a mechanical device that vacuums up all the cash. What is it? And how well does it work? That I can answer for you. The how well does it work piece has been validated with some pretty solid science. But what happened? What's really going on? Well, that's what this first point is about. We need to understand, and here it is, you may want to write this down, the transition from diagnosis to prescription. And when we do, we can see these types of returns. Now, many of you would think, wow, that's a big return. Or some of you might think, yeah, but, but what does that really translate into dollars? It translates into a lot of dollars. And it's shocking because it's in an optimized page. The first page was considered optimized. The control was considered optimized, and a fortune was spent on the control. Now, there's nothing wrong with the financial group that owned this page and backed it, invested it, that owned the company, that owned all the others that they rolled up. And by the way, uh, Britney Spears was connected with that particular center that you're looking at right now. This is a very famous place, and yet still, huge increase. What happened? What happened was the prescription carefully diagnosed in the form of a hypothesis produced a new page that produced a different impact in the mind that produced a different set of financial metrics. So let's unpack how do we do that? Well that brings me to the second point. We need to work from a point of view rather than a sense of talent. Now all over the world we see this problem. By the way, while I'm talking, take a look at that man and see if you can tell me who he is. Anybody that can guess who that is, you get a bunch of extra points. And of course, with those points, you can get Austin Spence to come to your house, mow your lawn for you, take care of, uh, wash your cars, right, Austin? Any, any, you know, the winner of this will win the, the 24 hours of uh, Austin's care and attention. Um, I'm sharing that with you simply to say, pay attention because that man says something you need to know, and he's a philosopher. That's your first hint. But while you're thinking about him, I want to go back to the point. We need to work from a point of view rather than a sense of talent. Many of us sit down as, uh, especially if we have a background in marketing or some experience, we are uh, you know, working at an agency, and we come in with our sense of uh, talent and creativity and think we should do this, and I think if we do that. I watch these meetings. Sometimes they blow my mind. I'm sitting in meetings at Johnson & Johnson, for instance. I was sitting in meetings with a whole table full of experts and agencies, and they're all talking and moving their hands, and it looks like a scene from Mad Men. But they're launching without the solution I'm talking about right now, and they'd already spent $25 million, and they were spending 90 before it was done. And I could see in a matter of minutes, it was going to be a complete disaster because they didn't understand this second point, how to develop a point of view and count on that more than your, your uh, sense of talent. What we need to get to the right answer is a special viewpoint, not a special gift. So stay with me and I'll try to tell you how that viewpoint begins to develop. I experienced this yesterday. I was sitting down with a team of uh, leaders from our side doing what we call HD, hypothesis development. HD informs, you know, so many of our experiments. And so we have to think, and I'm asking many, many questions. It's a research partner of ours in Africa. And, uh, 
and they have a complex site and a global business, and I'm looking at their work for the first time, and I really can't make any suggestions. I'm asking questions. I'm, I'm pulling threads together. I'm weaving them together. I'm looking at previous experiments. I'm wondering where is this traffic coming from? And all this time, it looks like a random conversation with random disconnected comments, insights, and questions, and yet, in truth, we're weaving a mosaic to develop that point of view. So you say, well, how do I translate this into my problems? How do I, how do I think about what you're saying in a context that will help me do better tomorrow on the job? Let me say there are two things you need to understand. First of all, the point of view is dependent on something that Martin Buber understands. I've looked at your thoughts, and Elad, you're right, it's Boober. I don't know how you recognize that. Did you guys do facial recognition? Tell me, because unless you have really read his work, that's pretty impressive. Dave Fogel thought it was Santa. But we make allowances for Dave. He's in our special program. Uh, Dave, I hope you, guys, we, if you're new, don't be mad at me. Dave has been on here forever, and we're friends. Um, Martin Boober, um, that is who it is, famous philosopher. And what Boober's doing that sort of interests me is he thinks about philosophy of dialogue. He's an Austrian, and uh, he's known for a phrase called the other. He thinks a lot about the relationship we have with the other. I first encountered his work when studying with the Jesuits in uh, the University of London at Haythrop, where I did graduate work in philosophy and theology, and Buber makes you question your relationship to the other. How does that connect to what we're doing here? I want to make a statement. It's careful. Every word is written down in front of me. It comes from a whiteboarding session uh, where we were planning this uh, time together. And I wrote these words. Their point of view, that's the other, their point of view yields my point of view. What am I saying here? I am saying that the first thing you need to do to develop a prescription after doing your diagnosis is start to see through the customer's eyes. It, when I take on their point of view, I can begin to develop my point of view. So this requires me to think about a web page in a different way. So now I'm going to go to one of the pages that you've submitted. Let's think about how that would impact our work on one of these pages. And uh, I don't know which one. Uh, Austin, let's go full screen, Cliff, and stay there for a while. Um, and I'm thinking about any of these pages. I only saw them uh, about two minutes before we began. But I think we'll go to that Get Information page. No, no, the, nurse pract the online BSN nursing. Go to that page. I can see the tab. All right. Complete your BSN online. Okay? RNS colon, complete your BSN online. Are you ready to get started? Now, team, I know that you've been a part of what we're doing, many of you, and exposed to our methodology long enough to see problems. Remember, diagnosis. So if this was the web page we're looking at, here's what we typically are doing. I am now... <laughs> I am now drawing a printed web page, okay? Just pretending that it's printed, okay? So uh, here is the page, and across it we have a headline. Take a look at the page. Uh, I actually need to see the page, then you can come back to the board, Cliff. It's <laughs> not your fault. I'm just trying to see it so I can get it right. Then there's a small subheader, uh, and then there's a button, and then there's a bar that runs across. Then there's another headline. And then there's another subheader. Then there's a lot of space and some text right here. And then it starts talking to me in three different ways. I'm representing those three boxes with three dots. Now, this is only a signal set. It is not a page. Uh, in fact, we just print it, or it's never a page. And even when we do, it's designed to trigger something in the mind. Now, I don't know how to fix this page by just doing this. I'm changing pins, and I'm going to start to mark problems on the page, and I'll do that by thinking about the page we just saw. For instance, 
the headline. Let's go to the headline. Complete your BSN online. Let's say that's a weak headline. I'm going to put an X there. And then, are you ready to get started? I didn't come for a question. I don't even know why you're asking me that. And by the way, how would I be ready when all I could see is a picture of two women smiling at something and I have no idea what they're smiling at? So I don't think that's very good. I mean this graciously, I mean this kindly. Request information. That's what I came to the page for. Why do I have to request information? Didn't I come to the page to get information? So now I, I'm not too keen on the button either, but let's stop for a second. So I'm just getting started. I've put an X at the headline. I've put an X at the subheadline. I've put an X at the button. I see problems. I am right now a physician and I am diagnosing. But as I mentioned earlier, covering my diagram with X's does not fix the problem. So I've got to go from that to a new page, but it shouldn't be a new page. It should be a new hypothesis. And where does the hypothesis come from? It comes from a new perspective. So how do I get my new perspective? Well, what we said just a moment ago was their point of view yields my point of view. So let's go back to the page. That necessarily entails me understanding what they're seeing and how it's impacting their thinking. So I want to back into that saying, well, how do I get that sense of what they're seeing? How do I get that sense of what they're thinking? Well, here it begins. First, we see by connecting the from to and the reason why. I talked about two things just now. I'm going to write them on the board. The from to and I'm going to just put reason with an R to stand for reason. The reason why. Now, what's going on here is, in fact, let me put the from to. What I'm trying to say is where do they come from and what were they trying to get to? So that requires me to go back into the channel and say, what stimulated the last behavior? What caused them to click on the button and decide against other options to come to this page? Because every, oh, this is important, every time they make a choice, I learn more about them. Every single micro yes is more than a victory in the momentum for the page. It is an insight into the mind of the person. And so what's happening is I'm studying what stimulated the behavior that led them to this place. And when I do that, I start to get a sense of the most important driver of momentum and the most important driver of brand impact, expectation. What are they expecting to see? Now, once I think about that, I've started to move through the eyes of the other into the from and towards the to, which leads me to an insight into the mind. Team, are you following me? Give me feedback. I know that this is more advanced. I thought this would be more advanced, but you've had a lot of the other. So if I'm, I'm going too deep, tell me, but I want to stay focused on trying to help you learn. So use your comments if you could to talk to me. But let me keep going. I also have the why and the why so, the reason why. So you could call that the reason why or the why so, but let's just think about that. So if I have seen where they've come from and where they're, uh, uh, that sort of points, it's like if you look at my tracks on the beach, you get a sense of the direction I'm moving towards. And if you look at my track on the beach, you might even see that there's a, you know, a restaurant on the beach and get a sense that I might be going there. You don't know for sure, but you definitely know I'm not going up there into the water because my tracks are going that way. You definitely know I'm not going back there because my tracks are headed that way. And you definitely know I'm not going over there. You know a lot by simply eliminating all the other points in the compass that I am not headed towards. And with that in mind, it very well may be I'm going to that restaurant. But let's suppose there's two restaurants and a bar there. You don't know which ones of those I'm going to, but I'm going in that direction and you're getting closer to getting into my mind to understand my expectation because to cash in the from and the to, you have to understand the why. The why so. So why am I walking that way? Well, by looking ahead, you may be able to see. Team, I'm starting to develop perspective. 
And that perspective is going to give me wisdom. And if you are the marketer, you are the customer philosopher of the organization. You should be the one who understands the customer, what matters, and their mind. Now, let's go back to the landing page. All right, so let's suppose I clicked. I don't know where they came from, but they've either typed a search term in or they've clicked on a display ad or they're returning. Let's just take those who clicked on a display ad. Now, if I think about where they were, I'm going to be able to say, what did they expect? Why did they come here? And this says, complete your BS online. Now, that might be important, but the reality is there's going to be many other people offering the same thing online. So I don't think it's sufficient. It doesn't tell me why they clicked on my ad instead of all those other ads offering the same thing. Offering a nursing degree online is sort of like offering food in a restaurant. But let's say it's a little bit more specific. So it's offering, uh, let's call it, uh, I'm in the South, Southern food in a Southern restaurant. There's more information, but not enough. There's a lot of Southern restaurants. There's a lot of nursing programs. So now I'm there, but I don't have any valuable information. And so why are you asking me this question? Are you ready to get started? Here's why. Here's why that's a problem. Number one, how could I possibly be ready to get started? Back to the beach. I haven't even got there yet. I don't know enough yet. I can see some tracks going there. I'm already started. I'm on a journey, but I'm certainly not ready to start applying for your program, but the only headline you offer me is complete your BSN or online. That hasn't helped me choose. I don't have enough information. I'm starting as a marketer to get a point of view about what's going on in the mind of the person coming to this page. Now with that, I could start to imply the power of implication, the, the, the power of inductive logic is the marketer's way to move from something on a page to something in the mind. So back to the button. Back to the button. What is it right here? Request information. Now it's starting to be more apparent the problem with this page. I'm starting to get my ideas about how to fix the top of that page. Because request information, let's talk about what's wrong with it in high speed. What information? You're going to call me? You're going to send me something? What are you going to send me? How big is it? How long is it? Who wrote it? Do I have to fill a long form? I don't know any of those things. And why would I click on a request information when I don't have enough information to know that I want any more information? Guys, you don't have to be a genius to see this. You start to see these traces, these behavioral traces. I don't need to see the data. May I say something that's going to sound problematic for many of you? We depend on data too much. Yes, data is powerful. Yes, we use data every day here. Data is for us behavioral traces. But sometimes marketers use data because they're not using the power of implication. I already can tell you what the data is already saying. I can already predict the bounce right there. I can already tell you you're not getting a lot of clicks there. Now, here's why. You're offering me something vague that doesn't at all satisfy my expectation set. In fact, it's annoying. And more than that, it's threatening. I don't know why I would want that information. I don't know what you're going to do when I click on that button. I don't know what I'm getting in exchange for the processable value proposition of that button. And then if I get past all that because it's not satisfactory, I hit a new thing. Overview. Well, wait a second, if I've got an overview, curriculum, admission, tuition, expenses, and accreditation, why do I need to click on the damn button? Isn't it right there? You following what we're saying? Now, I know these people. I'm not at all trying to be harsh. I'm trying to help. But I also have to assume the, the mindset of the frustrated, prospective student who's being bombarded with offers and information. Now, let's get beneath that headline. Go full screen, Cliff. So what's the difference between the headline under the blue and the headline above? RN to BSN, program option. First of all, that's not a statement. So now you, you're not getting any momentum from me. I'm already, I'm already on the verge of clicking away if I haven't already. Advance your degrees in as few as three semesters. That's the first piece of interesting comment I, content I've read. 
but it's buried. It's like headline stacked on headline with not enough of the work done by the other man I want to share you. Slip over to the slides. I've talked about this person before. He is a philosopher in his own way, though he wouldn't say he was, but he is. And uh, it is Robert McKee. Robert McKee is a master of story. He doctors screenplays in Hollywood. He teaches courses. The greatest directors in the world come to him for help, for guidance, because he knows how to craft a story. I've seen him break down amazing uh, insights from the archetypes in Star Wars and why it worked so well and see him apply it in highly sophisticated ways. His book, The Power of Story or The Magic of Story, anyway, it's on story, it's, it's, Robert, it's Robert McKee, it's fantastic. What I want you to understand here is we don't have enough coherence in yet to get this page right. We're starting to get a picture. A story is a, is a picture expressed over time. And I need that picture and that time to figure out what to get to do to get this page right. So imagine that I click on a page looking for information. Let's go back to here. If I want to generate a lead, then, then, then I, I could start to prescribe a way to fix this page. I could, I could take a picture of a powerful informational piece. By the way, I've done this test precisely with a whole series of universities and drove remarkable, breathtaking conversion increases. In fact, in one group I'll be meeting with next week in Chicago, we saw a 44% increase in revenue quarter to quarter when we got this right. So I'm not pulling this out of my, 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 my hat. I've seen that if I could more match the top of this page with the expectation, promise the information, visualize the information, tell you why it's valuable, tell you how easy it is, resolve your anxiety and your stress, give you a button that promised a value in exchange, told you it's an instant download, uh, even put the form field above the button and put it all together at the top of this page, I'd probably drive conversion up significantly, giving the prospective university more inquiries in their hand with contact information that they could work with before I get to any more of the page. Now, I don't have time all day here with you now to continue to build up my perspective on what's happening below. But I'm trying to illustrate for you what happens when you think their point of view yields my point of view. I'm trying to help you see that we do see by connecting the from to and the why so. All right, which brings me to my third point. My third point. All right, let's go to right here. Move from elements to coherence. What is coherence? Well, I'll take you to another person. Skip ahead. Thomas Kuhn. Uh, take me to, uh, yeah, take me to Thomas Kuhn. Here's a, here's a phenomenal, go to the slides, Cliff. This is a book that's had a lot of impact on thinking. It's the structure of scientific revolutions. I would have recommended perhaps Thomas Kuhn and also Karl Popper with his challenge of science. Um, in, in Kuhn's work, he shows you that science doesn't move deductively forward, but with wild leaps and intuition. Where does this intuition come from? It comes from a unifying explanation. These are my words. Coherence. Karl Popper would argue in ways that I think are too complex to discuss right now, challenging our very nature, our method in science. But to get to that intuitive sense of what's going on here, you need more than a bunch of problems or a whole bunch of fixes on a page. You need a unifying explanation that ties all the variables together. Without it, you make foolish mistakes trying to fix a page in ways that won't fix it. I'll give you an example. I'm going to erase this page, and I'd like you to go to something that I got on LinkedIn recently. This was sent to me on LinkedIn. Ask yourself if these people understood the from to and the reason why. Ask them if they had a point of view or a perspective, or maybe they know something I don't know. So here I am on LinkedIn. If you haven't joined me on social media, please do. If you're finding today helpful, please share and subscribe. But on LinkedIn, I get this. Ready for your next opportunity? Follow. Here it is. Flint. It's hard to read the headline from here. J.C. Penney is hiring. Now, <laughs> maybe they know something I don't know. Maybe I'm headed for some really serious problems in my life work. But all I can tell you is 
the very page we're on, my own LinkedIn page, if you look at it, how could you possibly connect that to J.C. Penney's is hiring? Well, it's easy to do when you don't have a point of view. It's easy to do when you're looking at data without wisdom. It's easy to do when you don't understand how to move from elements to coherence. However, let's talk about how to do it right. And so let's shift over, and I'm going to get very, very prescriptive myself in talking to you about questions you should ask yourself. In fact, in a moment, I'm going to share three of those with you. But first, I'm going to talk about the power of variable clusters. How many of you test? I, I don't know. We should all be testing. I have to talk about testing for a moment. I have to talk slightly complex, but just slightly. And then I'm going to shift over, and I'm going to talk to you about the three questions you need to ask yourself in order to get a unifying explanation and to know what you should change on your next landing page design. To do that, I just want to suggest to you that when testing first began, and if you don't know our history, we built the first behavioral research laboratory in history using the internet as its uh, sort of field, uh, its, its ecosystem to run our tests within. And more importantly, we built the first certification program in testing and we patented some of the first methodology that's used even today for something called split testing, A and B split testing. And in fact, um, I have, show them the patent. Here's an old patent that I just thought I'd pull up for you. Um, and in that patent, we talk about something called a variable cluster. It's not very brilliant, the patent isn't. Um, but it has heuristics and the concept called a variable cluster. We patented what's called a growth engine, long before those words were used on the internet, using the variable cluster to, to figure it out. And, and a variable cluster is thinking about the elements on a page in a way that allows you to test multiple elements at the same time. Now, anybody that has any background in testing says, well, if you change more than one thing, you won't know which thing it was that caused the lift or the loss. But that's not true. Uh, People in the internet who try to test one element at a time will never learn anything. Number one, it takes too long to run a test. You'll be lucky if you get a button right after six months of testing. You say, well, I'm only going to change one thing. Go back to the uh, page, Cliff, we just looked at. I'm going to change that button. I've had those same people argue with me who don't understand a variable cluster or the science. By the way, if you're saying, well, this is going somewhere that I, you know, is beyond me, stay with me because it's going to get simple and practical. Just hold on. That button... Well, let's talk about, if you change that button and put a new button there, you've got to ask yourself, is that really one variable? Because are you going to change the, the shape? Uh, will you slightly change the length if you change the words? If you change the words, how many variables are you really changing? Which word that you changed made the difference? If you uh, change the color, now you've got color and you've got shape. And you may have size, and then you have words. <coughs> what am I trying to say? Nobody tests single variables. We just fool ourselves because we haven't thought deeply enough. On the other hand, if you just test a bunch of random ideas, you're in trouble. This is why, hear me, most of the AI optimization work that you see is uh, exaggerated hype, like many things on the internet and in business. And uh, I was there when single factorial testing was challenged by multivariable clusters or multivariable testing. Multivariable testing is too random, testing many things, but there's no coherence. It just scrambles stuff. It's brute force with no wisdom. Multivariate testing doesn't typically get big lifts. AI, which I've so far been testing, and we're running our own software, but I've tested the big AI providers out there. It's very valuable in various ways, but it is not building coherent marketing and messaging hypotheses anywhere yet that can do what a human being can do with the power of synthesis and induction as opposed to deduction. So what does that mean about everything I'm teaching now? Go back to the page. You can change several things on this page as long as they represent one unifying explanation for what's going on here or for how to fix it. It's not about changing the button. It's not about changing the headline. The first thing you would do if you just tested the top of the page is you would change the message to reflect where someone is in the thought sequence. And to do that, you would change multiple things. Even the picture in the background is doing nothing. I said it before, I got people with their heads cut off, smiling at something I can't see, 
looking down at who knows what, accomplishing nothing to support the value proposition or even to draw my eyes into the text below. It's a waste of ink. And so what I would change, believe it or not, if I were building this page, is not a bunch of random elements or variables. I would change all of the elements at the top of that page that are interfering with or preventing me from expressing one unifying explanation for why this didn't work and what will work going forward. To do that, I would probably create a headline and a, he and a subheadline that talked all about the value proposition of the download. I would visualize, instead of pictures of smiling girls, a picture of the download. I'd tell you how many pages it had. If it was too long, if it was long, I would tell you it was comprehensive. If it was short, I would tell you it was an executive summary. I might show you a copy of the table of contents. And then once I had all the value laden on that page, uh, I might run that test or I might run it with the negative side of the fulcrum, removing all the negatives. That is the fear that you're going to spam me. That is what you're going to do with my email address and privacy. That is anxiety about, uh, you know, those pieces or the value connected to the overall download being a disappointment using perhaps testimonials and other things to strengthen it. But just the top of that page from here to here would all represent one unified, coherent, Here's the key word, hypotheses. And thus, I would get the result I'm aiming at, not by cleverly identifying problems, but by carefully prescribing a solution in the form of a coherent hypothesis. In, with that in mind, I'm going to tell you how to think about that, how to do that more thoroughly in the last few seconds, last few minutes, I want to give you three questions you can ask. And with those three questions, you can zero in on a unifying explanation, a coherent hypothesis. Okay, are you ready? So here are the three questions. And this is not for this page. This is for anything. In fact, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to suppose that we looked at another page and we drew up a number of flaws. Let's, let's letter them. We looked at the page. And, uh, and let's draw it too. Let's, let's draw this page. And I'm going to say that you, this was a web page. And you, uh, you looked at it and you said, hmm, I see a problem here. And I'm going to letter that one A. There's a problem with the headline over here. Let's, maybe that was an image. And, uh, and there's a problem with a subheader here. There's a problem down here with the call to action. And in the body text, there are long, long paragraphs with no bold font, no eye path. We'll call this one E. So this is an image over here. This is a headline. You get the idea. And before long, we say, what are the top five problems with a page? I'm not even trying to list them all. I'm just trying to get up most of that money. Not every dollar yet that's falling on the ground. And to do that, I might say, okay, these are the top five. All right, that allows me to start to ask my three questions. Here's the first one. What are the most important problems? That's what we just did here. All right? And, and so we've identified those. But if you just do that, you can't get the thing right. Here's your next question. You may want to write these three questions down. Here's the next one. Which problem, if solved, will likely have the most impact on conversion? Sometimes it's just one big thing. And maybe... Maybe in the first experiment, all we do is fix this huge problem with a call to action. Let me give an example. Maybe the page overall isn't great, but maybe the call to action has the form field on a second page and you're losing 80% that don't click through to the second page. And if I can just fix this problem, I can have something we here call an HPZ. Now you may not know what that is, but that's getting a page in the high performance zone. It's not in its highest, but it's in the high performance zone. You say, does that ever exist? I'm thinking right now of a big company that works with Southwest Airlines. We're talking a multi-billion dollar company. I had this same problem. On the fourth stage of the checkout, you're booking travel, you're booking tours and vacations. They lost 96% of their people. Oh, wait a second. That told me something. I don't care what I did on page one, page two, or page three of the funnel. It's not going to matter. I'm still going to lose 96% on the fourth page. Now, 
I had the from to, so I got to the why so. And in the why so, I discovered what it was. They covered that page with cross cells and upsells that confused people so they couldn't finally check out. They were too busy trying to process the cross cells and upsells. I knew that I could fix one thing, take the cross cells off and put them on the next step. And revenue would go way up and the page would hit HPZ. I also knew being on that, we could go back and fix each page and get them right. But that was, a, that was an example of one most important element that if I fix it, the page is better. It had a unifying explanation. And the unifying explanation was something like this. Remember, if you don't know about hypotheses, we've taught it elsewhere, go back into the YouTube videos and watch it. It has four switches, if, by, uh, then, and because. You have to have a statement for each of those four. When you word them properly, you'll form the hypothesis. Can't teach it now, I've already taught it. But in the end, that, the, that four switches allowed me to see that I could form one unifying change that got rid of all the cross-sell upsell and what would happen, what we predicted would happen, is a significant lift. That's how these things work. However, in some cases, in many cases, you don't see that one thing that you know is wrong. So you have to go to the third question. I'm going to read the first two and then the third and we're almost done. The first one is, what are the important problems? The second one is, which problem will have, you know, if we fix it, the most impact? The third question is, which combination? This is a trickier one, but it's a really good one. I get lifts every month in experiments by asking this third question. Which combination of problems will have the most impact? In doing that, we're able to go back and say, okay, all of these are wrong, but there's something about, let's leave the box around D, and, uh, but let's suppose that we see that if we just fix C and A, they're connected. Let's suppose that by connecting B, C, and A, fixing just those, I can get a well-articulated value proposition. Maybe I fix the image so it, so it shares value. Maybe I get the subheader and key text here to, to indicate the value proposition, and I fix the headline. Maybe that alone, getting the value proposition clear, will get more people down into the other micro yeses. Maybe that is my unifying explanation, which equals coherence, which becomes my hypotheses, which leads to my lift. That's how the pieces come together. I'm out of time. And, uh, but if you think about this in the way we're talking about, you'll be able to translate our frequent diagnoses into working prescriptions. And you know what? You can reach down like that with a tool set that gets all whole, or at least most of that cash that right now is blowing all over the road and right out of your phone. I'm out of time. I hope this has helped you. We've got more coming. I'm going to be teaching in Chicago next week. If you're in Chicago, uh, you can't get into it. It's private, but who knows? Maybe we'll get a chance to connect. I'm uh, going from Chicago to Canada, uh, Royal Bank of Canada, and then from Canada to uh, Toronto. I think I'll be in Toronto and then to France, into France. Um, wherever you are around the world, get to where we are. Let's learn together. If you need help, uh, we don't run a consulting business. We have a research lab, but if we sometimes have programs to help you with your pages. We can help you get your landing pages right or your websites right. Reach out to us. Please like this. Um, and uh, I see questions about travel. Um, I'll have our staff answer those. We read everything you write here. I want a real community of real people doing real good with our work. Thank you again.